G'day, welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Now, every time I put together a benchmark video looking at how a new game performs, much like I did last week with For Honor, quite a few of you asked me to do the same for Ark Survival Evolved. So I have been meaning to do this for a long time now. Over the past week, I've been testing the current generation lineup of AMD and Nvidia graphics cards in Ark to see how they perform. Just briefly, for those of you unaware, Ark Survival Evolved is an open world action adventure survival video game currently in development by Studio Wildcard in cooperation with Instinct Games, Effecto Studios and Virtual Basement. Currently, the game is scheduled for release on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Microsoft Windows, OS X and Linux sometime this year. However, many have been testing the game for years now, as early access began back in June 2015. In the game, players must survive being stranded on an island filled with roaming dinosaurs and other prehistoric animals, natural hazards, and potential hostile human players. The game is powered by the Unreal 4 game engine, and the open world environment contains tens of thousands of artificial intelligent entities, according to the developers. The game has certainly received a great deal of attention, and within just one month of going on sale, the early access produced Produced over 1 million sales. By August 2016, the game had over 4 million sales on the PC platform alone. Gamers really seem to be loving Ark Survival Evolved. That said, there is one thing about the game that most aren't loving, and that's the performance. It seems like for the most part, the focus has been on the content first, with optimization hopefully coming later. That's obviously not a bad thing, but with so many gamers addicted to the title, they are willing to upgrade in order to achieve better performance. For this video, I have just tested the current generation GPUs, and this still took a serious amount of time to do, as I tested not just the epic, but also the high and medium quality presets at 1080p and 1440p. Once the game is in better condition, or at least released at retail, I will retest using the current and previous generation GPUs, as well as test at the 4K resolution. The testing was conducted using the Core i7-7700K test rig, which runs the processor at 4.9GHz with 32GB of DDR4-3000 memory. That said, the CPU shouldn't really impact performance too heavily. Only a single thread was really used on our Core i7 processor, which is a bit surprising, and as a result, total CPU utilization only hovered around 30%. The Pentium G4560, for example, provided similar results even with the Titan XP. Just to be clear, we are actually looking at 1080p performance here. Yeah, so to say the game is currently unoptimized would be quite the understatement. Only the Titan XP was really only able to deliver perfectly smooth performance with the epic preset and play, and frankly the graphics aren't even that great. The GTX 1080 was 27% slower with an average of just 40 FPS. Meanwhile, the GTX 1070 only provided performance that could be considered just playable. Beyond that, the game plays like Mafia 3 on release day. Something I found both interesting and very odd was the fact that increase in the resolution didn't seem to reduce the frame rates by all that much. I'm not entirely sure what the holdup was at 1080p, but it seems like those with higher end GPUs might as well play at 1440p. Lowering the resolution probably won't help improve frame rates. In an effort to boost performance, I did drop down to the higher quality preset, and this had a profound impact. The Titan XP, for example, is now 82% faster, hitting 100 FPS on average. In fact, all graphics cards enjoyed a significant performance boost. The Radeon RX 488 GB, for example, is now 73% faster, though it still only averaged 38 FPS. In fact, for decent performance at 1080p, the GTX 1070 is still called for. This time, increasing the resolution did have a more noticeable impact on performance, at least for the higher-end graphics cards. Oddly, once again, though, we did see that the mid-range and lower-end cards only dropped a few frames per second, and I'm not really sure how to explain that. Okay, so now using the medium quality settings, we find that usually capable GPUs such as the RX 470 and GTX 1060 60GB still aren't able to achieve a 60fps average. Nvidia does appear to do slightly better, but even so, the performance clearly isn't very good. Once again, we see that for the most part, scaling is very strange when ramping up the resolution. The GTX 1060 60GB, for example, drops just 3fps on average, despite having to deal with almost 80% more pixels. As I was wrapping the testing up, I thought it might be interesting to see how a pair of tight XP graphics cards run in SLI. Since the resolution doesn't seem to impact performance that much, I went straight to 4K for the testing. The darker blue bar shows the GPU usage as reported by MSI Afterburner, and as you can see, the usage wasn't that high. Usage was virtually identical on both GPUs, so I just took the average. Using the Epic preset, we only saw 75% utilization on the Titan XP graphics cards, and this allowed for 63 FPS. As you can see, as I reduced the quality preset, the frame rate did increase, though interestingly, GPU utilization fell away. 
Well, I hope that was somewhat useful for you guys who have been requesting an ARC benchmark. And it seems like if you are having performance issues, the best thing to do is downgrade the quality settings. Hardly surprising, I know. But what was surprising was the fact that lowering the resolution won't help, or at least doesn't really seem to help much didn't in my case, which is bizarre, and I honestly don't really know how to explain that or what's going on there, and I haven't really invested a whole lot of time playing the game, messing around with it, I just unfortunately don't have time. What I can tell you is that the game isn't particularly CPU demanding, at least if you're using a relatively modern Intel processor. Something else worth noting is that 8GB of system memory probably isn't enough. The game will gobble up all 8GB right away. Therefore, 16GB seems to be the minimum for running this title. Actually, the game is a bit of a memory pig all around. VRAM is also heavily used. If available, the game will consume over 4GB at 1080p and over 5GB at 1440p. Finally, at the time of testing, Crossfire didn't appear to be working, at least it wasn't with a pair of RX 480s. Obviously SLI is working as we tested this on a pair of Titan XP graphics cards, and scaling is quite good. In fact, it's probably about the only way gamers can hope to play this game using decent quality settings. Anyway, I have no idea how many of you guys actually wanted to watch this video and see a benchmark for the game, but for those of you who have been requesting it, I hope the information included was worthwhile. Uh, if you are a fan of the game and want to see a more in-depth breakdown upon release, please let me know in the comments below and I'll look at making that happen. I'm your host Steve, catch you again soon.